Hey guys, time for Weekly Weird News. This week, we've got multiple updates on stories that we have covered in the past, starting with perhaps the most infamous recurring Weekly Weird News character of them all, but no, not Malachi Bronson. Damn it! He's serving a three-year prison term in Florida right now, presumably planning his next fake career. Yeah. Talking about Martin Scarelli. The pharma bro who made himself into a modern, real-life American supervillain, he's back in the news with his sentencing for his crimes going down on Friday of this week with the potential for up to 20 years behind bars. And uh, in the lead-up to that sentencing, he was ordered this week to forfeit $7.36 million in assets, including, possibly, that one-of-a-kind Wu-Tang Clan album, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, that he was revealed to have purchased anonymously in an online auction for $2 million. In addition to the Wu-Tang album, court documents also list out what else he has to turn over. $5 million currently held in an E-Trade account, a Picasso painting, all of his holdings in Vieria Pharmaceuticals, for formerly Turing Pharmaceuticals, and the Lil Wayne album, The Carter Five. Uh, that last one is a bit confusing. Like the Wu-Tang album, Shkreli apparently owns the only known copy of that Lil Wayne album, but the circumstances behind how he acquired it are pretty damn unclear. Since it's essentially just a leaked copy of an upcoming album which he'd presumably paid a third party for, much to the annoyance of Lil Wayne. Yeah, so it's unclear how they're attaching a monetary value to what's essentially piracy, especially since the whole point of this kind of asset forfeiture is that the government sells the stuff they confiscate. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin is presumably going to be sold in some sort of police auction, and it'll be very interesting to see how much it fetches given its ridiculous history. I was saying online, it's one yeah. of the best marketing campaigns for an album I've ever seen. Well done, Wu-Tang. Yeah. So yeah, when that gets sold at a police auction next to a four, fucking Ford Explorer, yeah. that'll be cool to see, but we would guess that Lil Wayne might have a problem with the police also auctioning off a CDR of tracks that were stolen from him. Yeah. Who the hell knows, though? Anyway, uh, to be clear, there's still a chance that Shkreli can hold on to that Wu-Tang album and everything else we listed, as long as he can come up with $7.36 million in cash really, really fast. Mm. Plus, uh, it's entirely possible Shkreli doesn't even have the album anymore. Back in September, he was listing it on eBay, though his auctions were taken down before they could close. Uh, it's entirely possible he went through other channels to find a buyer around then. Who knows? We don't know. Uh, one thing we do know, though, is that when faced with up to 20 years behind bars, Martin Scrilli starts acting a lot less like a douchebag. Writing in a letter to the judge asking for leniency, quote, I was wrong, I was a fool, I should have known better. Watching my trial was a very scary experience. For the first time in my life, I saw me from other people's perspective and realized that most people don't share my perspective. What a huh. cuck. What? <laughs> Empathy's a weird feeling. Yeah, it's, it's a long letter in which Shkreli basically just grovels and begs the judge for a lighter sentence. Mm -hmm. He literally throws in a, this is not who I am, at one point. No. I mean, Martin, come on. This is who you are. Yes. Own it. Nobody knew who you were until you raised the price of an obscure drug from $18 a pill to $750. And then, instead of waiting for the story to blow over after a day like a normal dickhead CEO, you decided to appear on every news program in the nation with a shit-eating grin on your face to let everyone know that you don't give a single shit what anyone thinks of you. Well, he does now, Elliot. He's grown. This is a new Martin. Listen, Martin, you... That wasn't all. You then used your newfound infamy to become a second-rate e-celebrity on Twitter until they gave you the boot for being too much of a dick. And meanwhile, the federal government decided to actually look into your business dealings and discovered you were operating what was basically a Ponzi scheme, but not even a very bad one. And you probably would have gotten away with it uh, if you weren't constantly putting a target on your back. Even then, though, you could have avoided serious pen penalties by just laying low and not being a total asshole to people investigating you. But you couldn't even do that. And you had the genius idea, while out on bail, to offer a $5,000 bounty to any of your followers who could steal a piece of Hillary Clinton's hair. It was odd. Yeah, I mean, all this was pretty fucking avoidable if you just had a, a little, uh, just a, a single ounce of restraint. Yeah. And now, even the one non-sketchy thing that you're known for, buying that album and making the Wu-Tang Clan immediately regret their decision making for that stupid project, even that could be taken away from you. Yeah. You flew too close to the sun and your wax shoes melted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a real uh, hype beast. But hey, I, credit where it's due. You had a hell of a run. Mm -hmm. Your name was on everyone's lips, and we cannot wait to see who plays you in the inevitable movie adaptation. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Maybe uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah. Probably. Could be. Not. Probably not. And hey, compared to some other rich douchebag criminals, you've at least got Moxie. In comparison, look at Billy McFarlane. Most people don't even know who that guy is, but he's the guy who organized last year's catastrophic failure of a music festival, the Firefest, 
and uh, he's now facing up to 40 years in prison. I bet he wishes he'd mouthed off a bit more during the whole process. If you're gonna go down, go down guns ablazing, blazing, I Get guess. Get your sentence worth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 40 years in prison, you should be able to drop 40 F-bombs in the courtroom. Exactly. Without, without being, like, scolded. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who uh, don't remember the Fire Festival, for me, it feels like this happened five years ago, not last year, but... Uh, it happened almost a full year ago. It was a luxury concert festival planned to take place on a small private island in the Bahamas where no poor people could show up and ruin the fun, unless, <laughs> unless the vacationers over at the Sandals down the block uh, you know, spilled over and wondered what was going on. It was gonna feature acts like Blink-182 and Migos and feature luxurious accommodations and celebrity chef prepared meals. It sounded like the perfect rich dick weekend, but turned out Billy McFarland had absolutely no idea what he was doing and when guests showed up after paying thousands for tickets and flights, they basically ended up stranded on a deserted island with barely any shelter or accommodations and slices of bread for food. <laughs> oh, and all the, ba the bands, they backed out at the last minute as soon as they started hearing how like fucked the situation was. It was doomed before it even began. Yeah. And this, of course, resulted in several lawsuits from disgruntled, rich attendees who did already paid thousands for literally nothing but a giant inconvenience. But those are just civil suits, and they're still happening, presumably. What's sending McFarland to prison here is a separate criminal suit over wire fraud. You see, basically, Billy McFarland had managed to convince a bunch of investors to give him millions of dollars to finance Fire Festival under false pretenses by lying and falsifying documents. And that money, well, it went somewhere, but it clearly, <laughs> it clearly didn't go to the Fire Festival. Yeah. So uh, McFarland this week pled guilty in court, getting himself a plea deal of just eight to 10 years in prison, though the judge still reserves the right to keep him in prison for the full 40 years if he just changes his mind. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, McFarland's partner for Fire Festival, Ja Rule, he remains free. Yeah. Probably looking for his next music festival to ruin. Although he is a plaintiff in most of those civil suits and will probably regret his involvement in the Firefest for a very, very long time. I can't wait till 20 years from now when they do the Firefest again. Yeah, it's how nostalgia works. Yeah. Like, they're gonna actually be wanting to be stranded again. In those people look seats. back at Woodstock 99 and they're like, man, I wish I was at Woodstock 99. I'm like, no, you don't. No, everything was on fire. It was, it was a war And there was lots and lots of sexual assault. Yeah. Ah, but like. These glasses, they're so rosy. I just can't wait for the, uh, you know, top secret, only one made Limp Bizkit album to come out in this court case. Billy McFarlane, he spent all his money on that Limp Bizkit album. <laughs> and who knows how much that thing's worth. Nah, Fred Durst, he doesn't make music anymore. He's a director. Yeah. And he's gonna win that Oscar. If Jordan Peele can do it, Fred Durst can do it. Yeah. Moving on though, in last week's headlines, we had one about how uh, one Chicago area candidate for US Senate was running on a pro-marijuana legalization platform and vowed to definitely blaze up if he wins. That candidate's name is Benjamin Thomas Wolf, and though we had just found out about him last week, he's already gone full milkshake duck, thanks to a bunch of readily available information uncovered by Politico indicating, yeah, he's probably a pretty bad person. Yeah. So on the surface, Benjamin Wolf seems like the perfect Democratic candidate. He's a former FBI agent and military veteran. He loves weed, he's young, he's handsome, and his last name is Wolf. Wow. Turns out, though, he's also apparently... I don't think they go row, row. I'm I think like, oh, 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 I'm voting for Wolf. Oh, Except you shouldn't. Howl the moon. Because <laughs> it uh, turns out, Mr. Wolf here, uh, he's also apparently a total creep who's uh, allegedly been physically abusive to multiple women from former relationships, uh, one of whom he doxxed by posting her name and home address on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, at one point, he was banned from a university campus for basically stalking a former girlfriend, and uh, one former colleague said of Wolf, to even have to comment on Benjamin Wolf is upsetting to me. I spent two years trying to get over having anything to do with him. He wrote a lot of nasty letters to me encouraging me to kill myself. He said, you should just commit suicide. Wow. I mean, Probably not the best idea to have someone uh, who is uh, who has allegedly assaulted people, told other people to kill themselves, dox someone. You know, vindictive people probably shouldn't be in politics. Prob well, <laughs> if only. Oh, uh, by the way, also, uh, despite referring to himself as a former FBI agent and Iraq veteran, Wolf was never an FBI <laughs> agent and never served in the military. To be fair, though, these aren't outright lies, just deliberate half-truths. Wolf did work at the FBI in a non-agent role for a few years, but he was never an FBI agent. He did work for the US State Department as a special agent in diplomatic security in places like Iraq and Africa, but he was never in the military. 
It's hard to find any example of Wolf outright saying he served in the military, but there's plenty of examples of him using the fact that he served overseas as a way to compare himself to his opponent in the election primary. Less vague, though, are multiple repeated uses of the term FBI agent to refer to his former job there, which is a flat-out lie. And one he should have expected to be caught on. This is what I don't get about these sorts of lies. Yeah, it's almost like people will do the bare minimum background checks on someone that is running for an office that is in control of your local or state government. We should probably, you know, a couple hundred years ago, they're probably like, you know what, we should start doing cursory research on anyone that wants to run for this stuff. If only there was a way. We should have prayed harder. Yeah. Anyway, Wolf's campaign website also featured a glowing endorsement for a while from a Veterans Affairs employee uh, who later accused Wolf's campaign of fabricating the entire quote, which Wolf admitted to, to the Chicago, Chicago Tribune, saying it was true. He said he'd written a letter for the guy to approve, but then never got a response back and decided, eh, I'll just publish the quote anyway. Silence <laughs> is the best way to indicate I'll that. I'll take that no to mean a thumbs up. Well, he didn't uh, say no, Elliot. He didn't say he no. He just didn't say anything at all. This man doesn't understand quote consent. Mm. Yeah. Well, he doesn't understand consent at all, apparently. <laughs> so uh, this isn't the first time he's confused consent. <laughs> uh, in his defense, Wolf told the Tribune, it's my fault 100%. Listen, I am not a perfect person. Well, he admitted fault. <laughs> I guess it's son. No, sir, you are not a perfect person. Uh, so yeah, legal recreational weed, great platform. But uh, we're going to suggest the people of Chicago Maybe pass on electing Benjamin Wolf. Yeah. Look at the field of candidates. Oh! I just, I love a good milkshake duck. Yeah. Like, the this milkshake guy is a milkshake this wolf. This guy just whoo, went to the top of the mountain and then fell in the canyon. Fell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, in this long episode of updates, we have one more update before we get into headlines. Remember how Donald Trump allegedly, almost certainly, had an affair with porn star Stormy Daniels? You know, how she actually gave a nice long interview about it back in 2011 that ended up not being published for some reason, and uh, how she was apparently barred from talking about it now because of a non-disclosure agreement that she'd signed just before the election in exchange for a cool $130,000. Well, I remember. Now Stormy Daniels is suing Donald Trump to get out of that agreement, which according to his people doesn't even exist, on the grounds that he never actually signed the damn thing, and therefore the agreement is null and void. Life comes at you fast. So the simple reason for Stormy Daniels filing this lawsuit is that if the affair did in fact happen, and it almost certainly did, and if Donald Trump actually somehow failed to sign the goddamn papers, she can just give back the 130000 and then go and make a whole lot more than that telling her story elsewhere. Yeah. Where it gets extra funny and extra juicy, though, is that all Trump has to do to beat the lawsuit is admit that, yes, the paperwork's real, yes, the pseudonym David Dennison refers to me, and okay, I'll just go ahead and sign the sign that paperwork like I forgot to originally. Yeah. However, doing that would mean admitting in court that, yeah, he cheated on his wife with a porn star right after his wife gave birth to a baby. Uh, Listen, he's not a perfect person. Yeah. And we're done. Yeah. So signing it, it would admit to that. It would stop Stormy Daniels from talking about it, but it, it would also be admitting to the affair anyway. So Completely pointless. The whole thing is fucking beautiful. We cannot wait to see where this goes from here. Oh, he's going to fight it. What a country. He's going to fight it, and we're going to see Donald Trump in court giving testimony. Nah, I didn't fuck her. Giving testimony under oath, which I'm sure means a lot to him. Under oath, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't do it. Sir, we can see that you're crossing your fingers. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> my lawyer, Michael Cohen, said if I cross my fingers, I can say whatever I want. The oaths don't matter. Legally unbinding. So there you go. Uh, well, we look forward to that. I, he couldn't possibly have more important things going on, so... No, I mean... He's still got pretty, a pretty boring presidency, otherwise. Yeah. Not a whole lot of scandal. So I know. Really shaking things up over there. Well, now it's time to get into more headlines that we'll probably have updates for in the very near future. Uh, starting with... Yeah, the creator of Pepe the Frog is suing InfoWars, who is Matt, having a bad week. Matt Fury is uh, really taking the bull by the horns here. He tried his best to kill Pepe the Frog or mm -hmm. turn him into a positive image, but... By God, the internet had already had its way with Pepe the Frog, and now he's going for the throat. I mean, I just can't imagine being him. The one, the one notable thing you've done with your life that you felt really good about for a couple of years yeah. gets turned into a hate symbol. Too many people, a yeah. hate symbol, uh, or at least something far different than its original yeah. purpose. It's like and, Hugo uh, Boss designing those lovely outfits yeah. for those soldiers. 
What do you mean they're Nazis? But yeah, Infowars are selling this fucking poster with a giant Pepe on it, and he's like, Hey guys, that's my trademark. Yeah, I will sue you. And, and Alex Jones was like, This is just a deep fake. Your intellectual property doesn't exist. Yeah, Pepe was the it one does. frog that the water didn't turn gay. And by God, you're taking him away from <laughs> us. But no, yeah, as you were saying, Infowars having a weird week. They, okay, so this is where it gets confusing though. They claimed that their stuff was getting shut down. Is that completely true? Uh, I know they got strikes. They're getting a bunch of strikes and advertisers are specifically, I think in the back end on the advertiser side of YouTube, you can like select channels you absolutely don't want to be involved with. Yeah. So a lot of them are choosing Infowars. They're presumably making a lot less money off YouTube revenue. I don't know what they're complaining about. Obviously, Brain Force Plus is selling like hotcakes. He's got to take more of it. Yeah. Figure out a way around this. That's right. Any problem can be solved with enough Brain Force Plus yeah. to clear the airways up there. Yeah. I imagine that he's rock hard all the time. Yeah, as he should be. Yeah. See, he takes the Brain Force Plus, but he's also taking so many other mm. vitality pills that all the, the blood that would be in his brain fueling it mm. to get over these problems is just sitting down there throbbing rock yeah. hard the entire yeah. time and then causing his rest of his body to go red as seen in those before and after pictures. Oh, he also just like groveled like a little bitch on Twitter. Yeah, to, to, to one of the to shooting survivors. Child in Florida, the yeah. survivor shooting. Yeah. Please, please, let's talk about this like men. Please. <laughs> this could ruin, this could ruin my channel. <laughs> Next up, new mom has sold over $6,000 of breast milk to bodybuilders. Raw milk, baby. Mm. Boneless. I mean, this is a great grift. I don't know. These people like, how do they know what breast milk tastes like? She could be giving them, uh, you know, goat's milk or something. Oh, they know. This is bread milk. This milk that was sh shipped to me. You, you take one sip of it and you're instantly, like, you know how you can't remember when you were a baby? Yeah. Once you sip the breast milk, you remember, you literally remember being born. Yeah, you remember you shit all your pants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And pee in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all peed in our mouths, guys. Come on, let's get real. But yeah, she's this well, woman. What's the point? They, they think that the breast milk is giving them, like, It's got, energy. yeah, you know, like, once you get, like, really, really into the bodybuilding, you start just sort of, uh, you reach a point where you're like, well, I'm doing great here, but yeah. what if? What if there was something that get me even more gains? Yeah. Human breast milk, that makes sense. It makes babies grow from this big to this big. Yeah. So it it'll makes make a lot me of grow sense. from this big to this big. I mean, yeah. Like with I'll most, pay good money for that. With most science that's completely made up, sure, it makes sense on a base level. Yeah. I'm going to inject stem cells into my dick, suck on my wife's titties. Yeah. <laughs> Give the baby the formula. It's daddy's time. They also eat the- Daddy's trying to get every, swole. They, they, they uh, also eat those little uh, Gerber things throughout the day. <laughs> baby food. It, it's, you, <laughs> look at what it's doing to the baby. <laughs> these guys, these things are getting huge. Look at them. You know, if you don't ever stop eating baby food, you never stop growing. Yeah, that's it. Society, the deep state. <laughs> yeah, they're covering all the this up. The deep state. Yeah. They try getting you switched to solid food when you turn like three or four. It's all over. They're hiding your true potential from you by taking that Gerber out of your little also, baby hands. Also, stop brushing your teeth. What are you doing? It's a yeah. trick. You have, the, the, your teeth will always grow back. You're washing all the vitamins away. Yeah, all, as soon as you start brushing your teeth, it stops. I'm on a raw teeth diet. Yeah, it stops the, the new teeth from growing. That's right, uh, humans like a are shark. like sharks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's constant, it's, it's actually really bad. That's why they put you on braces, too. Yeah. Because the new teeth are always trying to push their way yeah. through. I know what you're up to, Soros. Yeah. We're on to you. Yeah. I'm going to go find a mother to sell me some I'm going to go milk. suck on some titties until my teeth fall out. And I, won't I am all that is man. <laughs> Fucking Christ. I'm going to go eat some baby food. Do you think women want bodybuilders? They, like, just, you know, self-serve it? Yeah, probably. That's how you do it, right? Yeah. They're just self-serving? Yeah, they must. Uh, they must. It's like Popeye, they squirt it up into the air and when I guess me, baby milk, I <laughs> can really. <laughs> it's, this is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> A $1,600 Uber ride, drunk man blacks out, takes trip from West Virginia to New Jersey. I mean, it's not as bad as doing like a cross country one, but it's pretty bad. I mean, like, so the guy was blackout drunk. What, adding insult to injury, this was during surge pricing, and he accidentally ordered an XL Uber instead of a normal size one. Whoops. But, you know, he gets in. Well, those XLs are so comfy. You he, was, he was visiting friends in West Virginia. He gets in, he just taps home. And uh, wakes up three hours later in New Jersey. He's like, oh shit, I didn't mean that home. I meant my friend's home. Take me back. Can I get a refund? But uh, it's, it's, it's fine, someone already paid for it. Some company, some pizza company was like, thank you for keeping the road safe by taking a 300 mile Uber. We'll pay for it. 
Yeah, good for that pizza company. Yeah. As long as they're not doing anything funny in the basement. That's right. So I don't trust any of these pizza companies. Not anymore. Where'd you get the cheese from? Papa John's, he's still all walking around drunk somewhere, probably. Pissed that the NFL switched to Pizza Hut. Sad. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what? That fucking, uh, what's his name? Not John Elway, the other one. Peyton Manning? Yeah, doesn't he sold. His, doesn't return his calls anymore. He sold all of his, uh, all his pizza spots. Mm -hmm. Can Papa catch a break? <laughs> I guess not. Shaq releases birthday balloons with $500 tied to the ends over Atlanta. I just want to share my birthday with the city of Atlanta by releasing money off into the sky by and ensuing. not causing any problems whatsoever. Mass chaos in the streets. <laughs> What's the problem? People probably out shooting those things out of the sky. Yeah! How do we get the bullets to come down? Gravity. I've got just the idea. You have to shoot the bullets out of the air yeah. with more bullets. Yeah. Bigger bullets. That's right. true. That's only how you way, do it. The only way to stop a small bullet is with a bigger bullet. Mm -hmm. The only way to stop a balloon is with a machine gun. Lots of bullets. Kenyan doctor performs brain surgery on wrong patient. Well, did he turn out okay? Well, they discovered that the man did not have a blood clot like they originally thought. Well, like the original wow. one? No, I'm, I don't know what happened to that guy. Dead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably, it sounded like it was pretty urgent. Yeah. But the guy who they did operate on for a blood clot, they're like, well, there's no blood clot here. It's a miracle. Job well done. Job well done. Let's, let's get hey, I'm not a perfect doctor. Let's get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> let's get rip roaring drunk. Yeah, so uh, now that whole uh, that whole hospital staff is uh, under review. Whoops, I seem to have misplaced the brains. Someone mixed up those damn uh, paper with the paperwork in front of it. They mixed he's it up. He's got a skull, he's got a skull. How is that? I mean, guys. You can see how I'd be confused. I open these people up like cans. I think, like, what's the big deal? I sewed I'll your head back I'll together. I sewed them back together. It's fine. Good as new. In fact, stronger. Anyways, where's that other guy? <laughs> he's probably in pain. Bush says Trump makes me look pretty good by comparison. He's yeah. not entirely wrong, but also he's... Don't you know, let George W. Bush off the hook. No. The man sucked. <laughs> yeah. He's like funnier. Like, I'd... They always said this while he was president. You know, he's the one you'd want to get a beer with. I, and, I'd get yeah. a beer with him. I mean, he hasn't drank in 30 years, so I never really understood that quote at all. Yeah. The man was a raging alcoholic <laughs> and, and gave up drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was for his own forced to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean, yeah, he's a fun guy. He paints and shit. Not a great person. I own the book, though. The Portraits. Uh, Portraits yeah, and all the, all the proceeds went to, like, veterans. Yeah. But, yeah, apparently this is apparently this is a joke. It's like his version of the dad joke. It's his ex-president joke. Yeah, yeah, any, yeah. Anytime Trump's in the news or anything, hey, yeah, around friends, like, makes me look pretty good, huh? Am I right? But, no, he was a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Hartford police say man drove stolen car to court to face stolen car charge. I mean, he's doing what Billy McFarlane should have done. Yeah. I'm going to go to jail for a long time. I know I did it. Why not have a little fun? Yeah. Why not have just a little bit of fun? Also, like this guy, I, I like his reasoning. I mean, because yeah. he's just trying to prove the point. He's like, well, I, sh I should just get a free car. Yeah. Guys, we're just going to continue doing this. If someone if, would just get me a car. <laughs> give me a car for free and the crimes will stop. Until the crime stop, I'm gonna keep having to come back to court, and I'm gonna keep having to steal a fucking car to do it. Yeah. Give me a car. <laughs> Give that man, someone call a pizza place, <laughs> get that man a car. Virginia driver faces charges after running over himself. In the video of this was, yeah, uh, bone appetite. He was facing charges before the car ran I mean, over. he was driving drunk, and uh, at some point. He got out and decided to run in front of a car. He got out without, you know, putting it in park. Jumped out of the car. It would waste too much time yeah. to do that. Jumped out of the car, ran, in front of it while looking back at the police in front of the car that was still moving and ran himself over. It was quite comical. Yeah. And he didn't die, so that's it's even it's more funny. funny. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. Totally. We funny. can all laugh at the man. National Restaurant Association keeps getting mistaken for National <laughs> Rifle Association. Yeah. Uh was that uh that Senator or Representative Tammy Duckworth? Like people were going after her on Twitter because you could campaign finance uh Law, you can see donations. People are like, Tammy Duckworth got donations from the NRA. Let's get her. Yeah. Tammy, what do you have to say about this? And she's like, okay, yeah, I looked into this. It's uh, that's the National Restaurant Association. Listen, I don't know where my, where my money comes from, but I actually did look into it yeah. finally. And luckily for me, Woo! it was just restaurants. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, but uh, it's always two for one beers over at the Chili's, though. And that's your tax dollars at work. Yeah, there's a... the problem is they serve. One, two beers in the size of one normal beer. Yeah, it's all optics, like weird eye tricks. Yeah, it's bad optics. Yeah. There's a, yeah, so there's the NRA, the National Restaurant Association. There's NATO, North Atlantic Treaty 
whatever. And then uh, there's the National Association of, uh, I don't remember. But it's, it's, it's another it's another restaurant. It's like back in the late '90s, World Wildlife Fund and the World Wrestling Federation. It's a big problem. Yeah, I, I put on the pay per view. I'm like, where's all the pandas? <laughs> I wanted to see pandas having sex, not see greased up yeah. wrestlers having yeah, sex. The school's like, all right, guys, we got a special presentation today. You're gonna love it. It's the WWF, and everyone's like, woo! Uh, Hogan, suck it! And it's like, this is a koala. Oh. Boo! Someone hit that koala with a chair. <laughs> Big uh, Cheese Festival apologizes for running out of cheese. It's the fire festival of cheese right yeah. there. Yeah. Gonna go to jail for a long time. They did have an excuse. This is like in Oh, the, the cheese is just too good. No, they, it was bad weather. Oh. So the cheese people couldn't get there. Oh, okay. This is in America? But it wasn't. No, this was in like Brighton. Oh. The UK. They're and it wasn't a total plus. They're, they're like, guys, we ran out of cheese, but like we still have all these craft breweries here. We got musicians and shit. It's not a total bust. It's like when they canceled that wing fest here and I made my own wing fest. That's right. And then the company that made the wing fest got really upset. They, with got, me. they took it very personally. I was like, listen, it's just a gathering just, of friends. It's, it's just a <laughs> it's meme, just a, guys. Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Suspected drug dealer who went 47 days without having a poo is freed. And uh, the update on that story is that he might never have control of his bowels ever again. Yeah, it's uh, apparently not good to hold your sphincter tight for 47 days. Yeah. Uh, also, he's still going to jail. Like, they released him on the one charge, like the possession charge, yeah. just so he could leave and go to the hospital and, like, Get his poo move. Get his move. poo move, but then they're like, all right, but like, you know, we still have you on these other charges, so come, come on, on back. back. Oh, man, what a relief, though. Oh my God. Can you imagine pooping for the first time in 47 no, days? No, I, I would say you're going to surgically take it out of me, and that's Some that. Tongs? No. Cut me wide open. Fucking get it out. There's no way you're pushing 47 days worth of shit out of your colon. Yeah, you're going to bleed if you, if you do it. That it's going to be bad. He's gonna need a real strong yeah, day. He's gonna need to start using gauges in there for a couple weeks. Get, Learning, it, get it back. I need a pallet of to toilet paper. <laughs> Dude, imagine taking like uh, like uh, like milk of magnesia or, or like x lax or something. Like I gotta get it out somehow. And just shitting a volcano. Like you'd have to flush just so that it wouldn't like c go back inside your ass. Yeah. He looked like, he probably looked like uh, fucking- uh, Randy Marsh. Yeah, Randy Marsh. <laughs> just, Whoa! How many, how many uh, Keurigs do you think it weighed? Okay, it's at least 10. Probably smelled awful. 47, yeah. Oh god. Awful. Yeah. There's those uh, there's that thing where you like if you're if you're in the hospital for like uh, a surgery that they put you down for, apparently like the drugs that they give you uh, make it so that your body like stops uh, it's uh, like natural like excrement uh, yeah. kind of thing. And so uh, a lot of people say that like the worst thing that's ever happened to them is not the surgery. But like the days after, where you have to take a giant like opioid shit because you've been on painkillers. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. So <laughs> basically, any uh, relief that you've had from the surgery and the painkillers is instantly undone by pushing out a football-sized loaf of shit. So don't ever need surgery. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I don't trust doctors anyway. They they try to switch people's brains. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, you know, all I need is human breast milk and uh, stem cells for my dick. And you shoot, uh, I'm you good. shoot stem cells directly into your ass. It clears up all of the poop because yeah, everyone knows poop's stored yeah. in the butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kim, take a shit. Yeah. Jayla, what are you doing? <laughs> Final headline. He's carrying a real wagon around. <laughs> Vancouver police seek volunteer drinkers for sobriety test training. Good for you, Vancouver. Yeah. I would, I, that sounds great. That sounds like a great They're time. They're like, we need people to come in at 9 a.m. down to the police station, have a couple shots of whiskey, and then, uh, you know, we'll run some tests on you, see how accurate the old drunk -a meter is. Yeah, it's like when they give kids we'll drive you those, home. those glasses to try the car, and everyone's just hitting the cones and everything like that. It's yeah. a fun time to be in school. Not even really that accurate to, like... No, it's actually no. well way overboard, but yeah. get the point across. <laughs> wow, being drunk is crazy! Because <laughs> I, 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 I never drank when I was young, so when I, I was like, Really? People go essentially blind when they drink? Why are they doing this to themselves? This doesn't seem like it'd be fun even if you weren't driving. Not that it would be fun to drive while you're drunk, but like, how do you operate? It's, you know, you gotta, it's kids. You gotta, you gotta exaggerate. Yeah. And then they're like, wait, that was a lie. Everything must be a lie. Yeah. Get me that heroin. Some heroin. <laughs> Time to take a big shit. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's Weekly Weird News. Yeah. Check out a new episode of Tugs and a new episode of Tech News Day, where uh, if you're on YouTube and you're trying, just give up. Time to stop. Give up. Time to stop. 
Uh, we're doing a charity stream next week. Stay tuned for more information on that. It'll be next Friday, but uh, we'll fill you in as the uh, time goes along. Thanks, yeah. you guys, for joining us. Bye. Bye.